Next hot topic talks about the inflation drops first time in 19 months. Nigeria's inflation rate has recorded its first decline in 19 months, according to a report by the National Bureau of Statistics, NBS. In July 2024, the inflation rate dropped to 33.40%, down from 34.19% in June 2024. Despite this month-on-month -month decline, the year-on-year headline inflation rate was at 9.32% higher compared to July 2023, when it was 24 0.08%. On a month-on-month -month basis, the headline inflation rate in July 2024 was 2.8%, um, slightly lower than the 2.31% recorded in June 2024. The food inflation rate also decreased to 39.53% in July 2024 from 40% in June 2024. However, it showed a 12.55% increase year-on-year -year compared to July 2023. The reduction in fluid inflation on a month-on-month -month basis, 2.47% in July 2024, was attributed to a slower rate of increase in prices for items such as tin milk, baby powdered milk, fresh fish, snail, date, palm fruits, and various cereals. Now joining us to discuss this is Frank Elianya. He's a senior financial analyst at Tech Cabal. Good morning, Frank. Thank you for joining us. Good morning, and always a pleasure to be on the show. Always a pleasure. All right, so we're talking about inflation uh, dropping, uh, having a decline, uh, but it's not really a significant amount, uh, some people would say. It's just about 0.79% um, drop because it was at 33.49% um, um, if I get that correctly. Well, 34.19% and now it has dropped to 33 percent so it's just a little um, decline but is this something that we should be happy about maybe we'll start to see a proper decline um, in a few months from now I think at this point is uh, very difficult uh, to say or to project that this is a um, this is something that has come to be hmm. um, I have uh, I, I heard from someone who said that um, it could be attributed to the fact that the farming season or um, the farming season has started. Mm. Um, the harvest season, actually, from July to October, that's when you um, farmers uh, harvest uh, their, their, crops. their crops. And uh, yeah, so um, a significant amount of that going into the market can cause it, um, a decrease um, in prices. Um, if you've noticed, you probably would have seen that uh, some some food items are beginning to increase in the market, i.e. yam. Mm -hmm. um, I know that uh, some weeks back, um, a lot of people couldn't afford the, um, to buy a tuba of yam. Um, the same thing for um, items like uh, tomatoes and, and, and others. You know, so um, this, this um, seemed to be their harvest season, but then um, if we are to go with that alone as the explanation, then um, the question would be, why didn't it drop 19 months ago? Um, also, given the fact that um, insecurity continues to thrive in, uh, um, in the northern region of the country, if you look at uh, places like uh, Bauchi, um, inflation was the highest in Bauchi at 46.4%. Uh, um, you have Jigawa at 47.7%, uh, um, then Kebi, Benue, Delta, and these are like states where you get a significant amount of, uh, of uh, food crops uh, coming from. So it, it still tells you that uh, we're not in the woods, and uh, it would be too optimistic to project that um, next month's uh, inflation is going to drop as a result. I, I would rather all the thing that uh, maybe some of the programs that the federal government has started to do like uh, conditional um, conditional uh, cash disbursement uh, is probably starting to yield some dividends you know when people have money to spend um, or on on goods you know um, it sort of have some effect on uh, on prices of uh, goods, but hello, Frank. Mm -hmm. 
Hello? Yeah. Hello, Frank, can you hear me? Mm. I think there's a, um, a little issue with Frank's audio, but we'll try to get him back. Anyway, so I was just um, checking my notes, and I think one thing that I said was, um, in December 2022, which was just 19 months ago, a year and seven months to be precise, um, inflation was at 21.34%. And now, um, 19 months later, we're even seeing it become so high to the point that it was 34.19% in June. And as of July, we're seeing 33.4%, even though it's just a 0 0.9 um, decline. I don't know if, so, if it's something that we should celebrate. But one question I was going to ask is, how do we move from 21.34% to 33.4% in just 19 months? Isn't inflation supposed to maybe go up gradually if it needs to even go up at all? And, you know, that just begs the question that how are people coping in this economy? Because everything is so expensive. The prices of food and food is just like a basic necessity. You need food to live. However, a lot of people cannot even afford it. this um, this basic necessity and we're just wondering what the government is doing to ensure that you know we combat inflation because it is important if people are going to um, you know be able to put food on your table if businesses are supposed to thrive inflation plays a major role in every sector because if everything is expensive even for you as a businessman of course it's going to reflect in the prices um, of your own goods and services and we're seeing that and I was going to ask, you know, some driving factors of this inflation. I know some people would say, you know, energy is one of the driving factors because um, the cost of, ta of electricity tariff has increased. And so, of course, people's goods and services have to increase. The removal of fuel subsidy, um, you know, was also something that actually caused inflation because now transportation has has increased tremendously um people who use it as an alternative source of power as well it is an expensive product so of course that is also going to reflect and finally insecurity is also an issue especially when it comes to food inflation because most farmers cannot go to their farms um they're they're scared of their lives they're scared that terrorists would you know come and attack them and so there is there is really not much being done in the farming season and of course when it comes to harvest since you did not farm anything you're not going to get anything in the harvest so these are things that are happening and um even though we have a little decline of 0 0.79 percent i'm wondering um you know how we can just ensure that things become better and i don't know if we have frank back frank are you there I'm here. Uh, sorry, we're going to uh, have to do with audio. Uh, it, it's, it's interesting that you talked about electricity. Because yes, that's what, that I was just going to ask you that. You know? right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so electricity is a critical part of uh, farming. Um, with, uh, um, you probably don't need it when um, during the day. Um, it, um, what you find is that Nigeria's agri sector is mostly is mostly um, subsistence based or still mechanical to a large extent. Mm. Um, there's, uh, the, the, the level of technology de deployment hasn't um, grown as significantly as one would have expected over the years. Um, so a lot of uh, the agri practices is still mechanical. But then um, there are still, there are now aspects of that that require a lot of electricity. And of course, if you're going to run a farm, a big plantation, um, a large, uh, um, in large scale, you require electricity to make that happen. So um, that cost of of that electricity rising almost every every month is going to impact the production or the output of what every farmer. Um, doors on their farm. So um, whether to process the, um, the, the harvest, whether to store the harvest, as a matter of fact, um, um, we are told that um, a significant portion of what is harvested, like 70% thereabout, are lost in transit um, because the storage facilities are not adequate enough um, to bring them from the farm to the market where they are needed. So if you've already lost 70%, so 30% is what you're now fighting maybe to regain the 70% that you have. 
what then happens is that you find that the farmers will have to increase the price of of the remaining 30 percent mm. in order to recover from yeah. the 70 percent that they have already lost do you understand mm. so um in, in that in in that situation there's already inflation chasing those goods coming to the market now you now add things like logistics uh because we don't have uh, a proper railway system that can transport those goods those mm. um food from the farm to the market we have to rely on uh we have to re rely on uh, trucks. Yeah. We have to rely on other um, road road transportation. And there are hazards on road transportation. There are levies, there are touts, there are government mm. agencies that just will not um, have sense enough to know that you need this food in your state mm. um, for, for your citizens to, to eat. But they will rather pr um, tax it um, to death. So mm. all, that taxes, all, all that taxes are also applied to the cost of that um, uh, of that fruit or that food that is coming to the market, then when you get to the market, you have to find a place, maybe a warehouse to to put it so that mm -hmm. the customers Another will come cost. or maybe shop exactly. So um, to pay for all of that, you pay for um, if it's in Lagos, you have to pay for land levy, you have to pay different agencies as well for the storage, mm. you know, and then you bring it to the market cost of bringing it to the market, let's assume you are selling at the wholesale, the retailers that are going to come are also going to price in, are, are also going to price in the cost of taking it from your warehouse to their own shops. Mm. So by the time it gets to the end user, that's you and I, mm. we are already paying like times 10 mm. of, of, of the cost that was used to produce that single item, mm. you know. So those are the issues. And we've not even talked about insecurity. Mm -hmm. um, we're told that there are places now where you pay um, a lot of money um, to to harvest to harvest your um, your crops before uh, before you even go into your farm. You have mm. to pay. You know, you have to pay bandits. Levies. You have to pay terrorists. Mm. You know, so um, um, I, I think I, I, I think there is a report by XBM um, XBM Intelligence that says that no less than 139 million naira um, are paid in, 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 as farm levies. Wow. Okay. Now, now this is in, including planting and harvesting to bandits. Hmm. Bandit. All right. So, and, and oftentimes they can demand that uh, as in as much as 224 million across the north, you know. So, it, it varies how much when they are in a good mood or when they are in a bad mood. If mm -hmm. they are in a good mood, they will... Collect okay, less. Frank, I mean, I mean, this is a great analysis that, you know, you've even painted for us, for us to understand the picture, for us to understand what we're actually dealing with and why inflation has risen um, as high as it is right now. And, you know, when you were even talking about you no know, railway system, I was just thinking to myself that I remember ha having certain conversations with a few friends and they were saying it would have been better if we even had a railway system instead of the, um, the, the Lagos Calabar coastal highway that is being built right now by the government but that is by the way let's just talk about what can we do to um make sure that this decline start we start to see it um on a month-on-month -month basis right now moving forward it is just as you have said to build infrastructure um in the places where they are most needed not to build um during the buhari administration um, what you had were railway projects that were built in places that um, that were inaccessible. Um, you build things from uh, na uh, from uh, inside a village into uh, maybe you're going to Ni uh, Niger Republic or whatever. Or not. I don't know whose idea those things were. And at the end of the day, of course, those those projects are yet to be completed till 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 date. So first of all, is to prioritize areas of need when you're building infrastructure. It is very, very critical. You cannot, you, we, we cannot overemphasize that. You need to prioritize areas of need. What, what, does, um, what does a Benue state need, for instance? That's a food basket of the nation, as we always call it. So if it's a food basket of the nation, what do the farmers there need to bring whatever they harvest to the to the market where they are most needed so first of all you're thinking about um addressing insecurity that's number one so you must efficiently as a matter of urgency as well 
address the insecurity that the farmers feel. Once you can address that, that is like 50% of the job done. Then the next is to start thinking about how do you improve the infrastructure in those places. Um, what ABA, for instance, or what other state have done with geometric could be something the government should start thinking about for most of these states where power issues continue to be a big challenge. You know, so mm -hmm. you can cite such projects there in Benue State and say, it's okay, we are going to prioritize areas like this. Give them sufficient amount of electricity. And then the next thing you start thinking about is storage facilities. There are um, there are technologies that must be in place for your food to be stored healthily, you mm -hmm. know. So we need to stop right that. How do we reduce the amount of food that we waste from um, from the farm to the market within that within that yeah. um, period? Mm -hmm. We need to cope that efficiently. That means investing in storage facilities, making it a priority mm. for the agric sector. Without the agric sector, you cannot curb inflation. That's mm. that's just the truth, True. right? Because the food inflation is the highest um, uh, um, uh, um, Dri item that we have. Yeah, driver, uh, driving factor. Uh, yes, mm. so is is the highest driving factor for all of this. Mm. So you need to focus on it. Let's address all the issues that the farmers feel. And then, of course, there are farmers that talk about uh, access to seedlings. There are issues around fertilizer. They say they've addressed issues around fertilizer. Mm. Yes, even if you have addressed it, what more can you do yeah. to ensure that all around the year, farmers continue to produce they're not seasonal mm. that's part of the problem that we have i know in that i know that um the government has you know decided to introduce the whole uh, stopping import duty on certain um items when it comes to farming and foods and all of that but i think that you know importation is just one thing um like you've rightly said we really really need to look at agriculture and how we can ensure that the agricultural sector is better and maybe stop being um a nation that is just getting services or getting stuff if we start to manufacture a whole lot more then we can start to see inflation actually drop significantly and i'm sure that um you know the the exchange rate the fx rate is also um another factor because we are importing yes. so many things that we get in our nation so if we start to produce um be more of a production nation a manufacturing nation then we can we, we can just see maybe better numbers when it comes to the inflation but this is where we have to wrap it up right now frank thank you so much for coming i always love um talking the numbers with you and talking about our economy thank you so much thank you for having me yes all right we're speaking with frank elianya he's a senior financial analyst at tech cabal and we've just been talking about the fact that inflation has dropped for the first time in 19 months right now it currently stands at 33.5 percent anyways this is where we have to wrap it up on the show today thank you so much for having a breakfast with me as always my name is rume paulson i'll see you again on monday have an amazing weekend and do not forget to have some fun and let your hair down good morning